Now, I, I just brought those out as some humor, but not very wise things to do, are there? And people do foolish things. Can I say families can do some pretty foolish things? And what we need is wisdom. Let me ask you tonight, do you use wisdom when dealing with your family? It says here that wisdom, look at it again, hath builded her house. In Proverbs 24, verse 3, you don't have to turn there. The Bible says that through wisdom is an house built. Did you know that wisdom is needed so desperately in connection with our relationships all throughout the Bible? In fact, just in Proverbs alone, Solomon tells us that in our relationship of fearing the Lord, that wisdom is the very beginning thing to get. The fear of the Lord is the beginning, very beginning. The wisdom is the very beginning of fearing the Lord. In, our, in, a, in a fool's relationship to wisdom is that they despise it. They reject it. That's why they're foolish. We learned that this morning. The righteous man's relationship to wisdom is walking upright with the Lord. It's a wise thing to walk right with, the God, with God. The happy man's relationship found in Proverbs in wisdom is that he finds it. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, that getteth wisdom. The Lord's relationship to wisdom is that he founded the very earth with it. You know, the Lord needed wisdom to, find, to found the earth. He built the earth. He created the earth upon wisdom, his wisdom. We are told that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Here in Proverbs 9, we have the instruction, the introduction, the instruction, and the invitation of wisdom. Look at verse number 1. We see wisdom's introduction. What is she doing? We find her building her house, right? Wisdom hath builded her house. It implies that wisdom builds the home. Wisdom builds a dad. Wisdom builds a mom. Wisdom builds brothers and sisters. And wisdom is hewing out seven pillars. Look at it. She hath hewn out her seven pillars. Wisdom is building, right? In verse number one. And it's cut. the word hewn means cut or carve. She is carving out, cutting her seven pillars. Now, what's a pillar for? We see them on buildings. What are they for? They're not just for looks. Sometimes they are. But a lot of times they're there for structure. For support, right? And so these pillars, these seven pillars of support, columns used for strength. Wisdom is building and working on relationships, trying to make them stronger, like a pillar. Trying to make them more secure. But it says here that there are seven pillars of wisdom. Isn't that what it says? And it's interesting here, and maybe it does uh, give us seven things. I don't, I don't see them here. It just says that she has hewn out her seven pillars. Uh, but over in James chapter 3, in a parallel passage, turn there real quick and look with me. I do see seven pillars of wisdom. Maybe James took it a little further. And this is a uh, Ryanology here, so don't, don't, don't hold me to this as the seven pillars of wisdom. But it is pretty, it is pretty black and white here, if you will. Uh, look at verse number 13 of James chapter 3. Are you there? Say Amen. The question is asked, who is a? All right, so the question demands an answer, right? Who is a wise man and a dude with knowledge among you? It tells him, let him show out of a good conversation his works with wisdom, uh, with meekness of wisdom. And then it goes on to say, but if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not, lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but it is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where there are envy and strife, where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom, here we go. But the wisdom that is from above. Now, I want you to notice there are seven things here. Maybe, maybe Solomon said there are seven pillars building the house of wisdom. And maybe James gets a hold of that later on and says, and here they are. If you count, there are seven. What, who is a wise man? That person who is first, pure. Now, what it says? You count them out. Purity, peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. There are seven things there. And so tonight, if you look at this parallel passage here, who is a wise man? Well, he has, he's, he's, it's pure. He, his wisdom is pure. Purity is a good pillar, isn't it? Can I say purity is a good pillar in the home? You know, you can try to be pure at church and try to be pure at 
Christian activities, but purity begins in the home. It's got to be pure home. You can't come to church and feel a part when you're watching stuff on TV coming through that has language and basically pornography. And you say, well, it's not pornography. Well, the, some of the materials that comes in through the television today, I, I don't have television. I haven't had cable for years. But some of the stuff that I know comes through is, can be, in my book, labeled pornographic. And we watch it. Some of us watch it. Some Christians watch it. Maybe you don't. But there are seven pillars here that says the first one is first pure. Purity in a, is a good, strong pillar when, we'll, when we're dealing with the family, when we're dealing with every relationship, Right? How about peaceable? Who doesn't desire to have a peaceable relationship or a peaceable home? Nobody says, oh, I just can't wait to get home. It's the war zone. Bless God. But some homes are like that because there's no wisdom. Are you with me? So there's no purity. There's no peace. There's no peace. Wisdom builds a peaceful relationship. What's the next thing? Gentleness, right? Gentle. It's pure, peaceable, gentle. Isn't it so true that when we use wisdom in our relationships, we tend to uh, be a little bit more gentle with people? Wisdom says, hmm, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look into this and not be so harsh. Number four, easy to be entreated. That's a pretty good pillar. Wisdom treats others with giving them the benefit of the doubt. Amen? That, that's something that would work in the church, too. Instead of getting all huffy and puffy about something that, Somebody did you wrong in the church. Hey, maybe you should give them a bit of a doubt. Maybe they're going through a hard time. Maybe they have a wounded spirit. We talked about that. And so easy to be entreated. How about full of mercy and good truth or good fruits? Good truth is good too. Full of mercy and good fruits. Amen. That doesn't mean apples, oranges, and pears, all right? The person using wisdom can't help but spill over with much compassion and much giving to others. This is wisdom. Okay, this is a pillar of wisdom. It did say who is wise among you, right? And then he says, here's a wisdom from above. Here's what wise people are. Without partiality, that's a pretty good one, right? Wisdom doesn't single out any person. Wisdom doesn't have cliques. Wisdom doesn't say, I'm going to just sit with this person in church because I'm not daring sitting next to them. Without partiality. Uh, without hypocrisy is the last thing there in verse number uh, 17 there of the seven pillars. I'm calling them seven pillars, okay? My, uh, uh, my theology there calls them the seven pillars. Without hypocrisy. What's hypocrisy? Of course, it's wearing a mask. It's a pretender. It's acting one way, but really inside you're not that way. And wisdom in a relationship or a family produces a genuine real deal. We need some real dads yeah. with real wisdom. We need some real moms with real wisdom. Yeah. And not this fake stuff, amen? Not put on a mask. All right, but really have these things. Now, I'm not sure if James was referring to Solomon's seven pillars here of wisdom, uh, but they sure would fit, and they sure would fit for the home. Now, look back at Proverbs chapter 9 again, and let's just kind of look at what, uh, what else is going on here. In verses number 2 through 4, we not only have seen wisdom's in, uh, in, 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 uh, introduction, we see wisdom's invitation. What exactly is wisdom inviting or should I say who? Look at uh, Proverbs 9 and verse number 2. She hath, I want you to see the preparation here that wisdom does. She hath killed her beasts. She hath mingled her wine. She hath also furnished her table. She hath sent forth her maidens. She crieth upon the highest places of the city. This is what wisdom does. In other words, the invitation, wisdom is getting things ready, listen to me, to serve others. Again, this is a relationship tied to wisdom. Let's say in our homes. It's not just the dad. Let me, let me help you out, teenagers. Let me help you out, kids. It's not just the mom and dad to serve you. Wisdom on your end says, I need to help mom out. Wisdom on your end says, I need to help dad out. Wisdom on your end says, I need to obey and clean my room. Wisdom on your end says, I need to, I need to listen to her because, or him, my mom and my dad, because... They know a little bit more than I do. And by the way, they do. Wisdom is getting things ready. Notice it says she had killed her beasts. All right, sorry, vegetarians. Meat, the meat's ready, amen? 
Just like that, the uh, we pulled up there to Joe and Christie's, and Blake had those steaks on the grill, and I was like, "Hallelujah! There's a God in heaven. She hath killed her beast. <laughs> she hath mingled her wine. Okay, the drinks are ready. She hath furnished her table, the plates, the napkins, the, the silverware, the glasses are all in place, and she hath sent forth her maidens. The servers are in place. Everything's in place. Getting ready to what? To serve." getting ready to serve. Then it says, she crieth upon the high places of the city. Every time we read that in my house, I read a proverb out loud every morning in my house to my family. And every time I read that, one of us, really like a silly little thing, we go, ah, wisdom crieth, ah. Y'all do stuff like that? I told you about Proverbs 29, 23, where it says, woe, talking about woe, about the drinking, woe unto them, you know, who look at the wine, who tarry long at the wine. My wife is the woe queen, not because she drinks, but because of the way I drive. Okay? Because the way I drive. Okay? Whoa. Whoa. Okay, anyway. Y'all need to make the Bible fun or you're going you're gonna to have a boring life, okay? She crieth upon the highest places of the city. Ah! She sends out her invitation. Who's the invitation for? Look at verse 4. Whoso is simple. Let him turn in hither. To where? To wisdom. I'm serving you now. Come and get. Simple people need wisdom. As for him that wanteth understanding, those who desire to have understanding, not just a simple person, but those who really want understanding. The word there actually lacks understanding. She saith to him, and here's the instruction. What is the instruction of wisdom? Come. You have to first come and get it, right? The table is ready, right? Everything's in place. Wisdom is there to get, right? If any man lack wisdom, let him ask. So you got to come and ask. Are you with me? So come, eat of my bread. You got to partake in it. You just can't come to it. You got to ask for it and, and get it and eat it. And drink of the wine which I have mingled. And then she says, then the Bible says, forsake the foolish. Wisdom says, I'm going to forsake the foolish and I'm going to live. And I'm going to go in the way of understanding. So the invitation here leads us to the instruction which tells us to come to the table and get wisdom. Do you know wisdom's available for every one of us? You, you understand that it doesn't take somebody who's been in the ministry for years, a pastor or a leader, to be the great one with wisdom. You can have wisdom. Just how bad do you want it? How bad do you want to come and eat of it? It's ready for you. In fact, it's ready for you every Sunday morning. It's ready for you every Sunday night. It's ready for you every Thursday night. And it should be ready for you every day when you open the Word of God. Because in it is wisdom. But you got to come and you got to eat of that which has been prepared. And, and then it says, forsake the foolish. But we just want to kind of hang on to both worlds. We want to have, listen to me, listen to me. We want to have that TV show in our house pumping in the profanity and the nudity and the in your windows, and we still want to say we want wisdom. you got to forsake the foolish. That has to be forsaken. That's called separation. We have to forsake the foolish and go in a different way than what you came in so that you can be led in the way of understanding. That's what verse number 6 is talking about. So all of this wisdom and all of her building of her house, notice it's all connected with relationships. If our families, I said this before, wisdom is the principal thing. It keeps our families strong. We can call it the seven-pillared strength of wisdom. And I say this a lot, but if our families are strong, then our, then our church would be strong. If our families are weak in wisdom, then our church is going to be full of people who are weak in wisdom. It's going to be full of people who haven't come and ate and drank of it because it's ready. It's ready. God's prepared it. It's not just in Proverbs either. It's all through the Bible. Now, let me give you tonight real quick. That, that was kind of introduction, and this is going to be quick tonight because I want to get you out of here. But seven pillars of wisdom that I have, uh, I know works for my family, okay? As for me and my house, this is what my family does, and maybe it will help you and your house too. It's all biblical-based here, okay? You are going to write these down. They're very simple to remember, but write them down. There are only one or two words here. 
Number one, to have a strong family built on wisdom's pillar. How many of you want that tonight? You want your family? You want a wise family. Okay, the opposite of that is a foolish family. Okay, and that's not good. We learned about foolish this, uh, uh, this morning in Sunday school. And so a wise family builds their house upon these pillars, right? And the first pillar I've, I've got here tonight is what my, my, my family tries to practice. We're not perfect, okay? You just take a look at me and you know I'm not perfect, all right? But we pray, here we go, write this down. We pray, we, tr- we, we work on the wisdom pillar here, to pray consistently. Isn't that what the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17? Wisdom's pillar tells us to pray without ceasing. You know how strong of a pillar that is in your family? Prayer. Prayer is just as strong as God is. Do you know that? Prayer moves the heart of God to do something in your life. And what do we do? We complain, we gripe, we run to 1-800-DR-REV, whatever his name is. Uh, we turn on the TV and we listen to you know, whoever's on the TV that's not doctrinally sound, and we don't find wisdom in any of that. And you're not building any strength for your family. Pray consistently. A family that prays together? Amen. I believe that. Let's not just teach our children how to pray. Let's show them how to pray by praying with them. Let me ask you, moms and dads, guardians, whoever you are to your children, have you prayed with them consistently? You know, that's a key word in the Christian life, consistency. We, we start something, right? But we never, a lot of us never stay at it. it be, you know, it becomes old hat. But let's show them by being, praying with them consistently. Number two, not only do we try to pray consistently, we try to play together abundantly play together you know families used to go to the park together together mom dad children families used to break out the board game monopoly not monopoly (laughs) there are some good board games out there there are some bad ones so be careful what you're playing together (laughs) but once you play together Ecclesiastes 3.13 says, uh, enjoy the good of all your labor. What good is it not to enjoy what you have gotten with your family? Play together abundantly. Play a board game. Play a card game, not poker. (laughs) Go outside. Throw a ball. Throw a Frisbee. I know it's 95. (laughs) Do it for three minutes. And they come inside. I'll be right up here. That would be me. Go to the park. Go on a hike. Do what you do, but do it together. Go bowling. Amen, Corbin? Where you at? Not that Corbin. That Corbin. You're not a bowler, are you? Do you like bowling? Well, both Corbins like bowling. But uh, I didn't know you like bowling, bud. Do something fun with your family. Do it together. Amen? We got moms raising the whole family while dad's earning the paycheck. You say, is that wrong? It's wrong when the dad's not involved with the family. It is wrong. There's no relationship there except dad's the breadwinner. Well, praise the Lord, you got a husband that's a breadwinner. Praise the Lord, there's a dad that's a hardworking dad. I I got that. But take some time to play together. Pray consistently. Play abundantly. Did you know this? The only thing the family does, this is sad, what I see today, the only thing they're connected to is their cell phones. And the only thing the family does together successfully these days is they're all together in the same room, but they're each doing their own thing on their cell phones. You ever seen those commercials that, you know, they're just all, what's going on here? Well, they don't even know each other. That's not playing together, okay? Sad here, if this is true, the average family member, whether mom, dad, I think it goes up a little bit for teenagers, spend four hours daily on their phone, social networking or whatever, four hours a day. Take that four hours and spend some time together. Turn the phones off, turn the whatever off and go outside and enjoy, you know, doing something together. My family tries to do that. Doesn't always happen. Things are busy, but at least that's going to build some pillar of wisdom. Number three, resolve conflicts immediately. Resolve conflicts immediately. Immediately. Ephesians 4.26 is wisdom's pillar. 
that tells us that we should not let the sun go down upon our wrath. How many times mom and dads went to bed angry with each other? That's not good. That's not building a pillar. In fact, that's destroying the very structure of what wisdom says do. We should not let the sun go down upon our wrath with our children. Let me ask you tonight, have you ever went to bed angry at one another? That's not wise. This will not build strong families. Resolve conflicts immediately. I used the word, and I stole this word from somebody. I don't know who it was, but from another preacher. Make short accounts. So you had a tiff. You had a fight. So you had a knockdown drag out. Frying pans were flying through the air. Amen? <laughs> Doors were punched. Walls were punched. Right? If that happens, listen to me. Resolve it quickly. Resolve it quickly. That will give you the wisdom that you need. Number four, guard your hearts faithfully. Proverbs 4.23 is wisdom's pillar here that tells us to keep our hearts with all diligence. For out of it, the heart, are the issues of life. So we got to guard that thing. We got to guard our hearts. How do we help guard our family's heart? How about teaching us and teaching us too and our children to have self-control? We need to teach our kids to restrain their passions. That's why we got a mess today. Oh, let little Johnny just go do what he wants to do. I don't want to hurt. You need to restrain little Johnny sometimes. And look at him right square into God given eyeball and say, No, sir. Oh, well, that's gonna that's gonna hurt his little ego. Well then hurt his ego. His ego needs to be hurt if he's acting like that. Guard your hearts, self-control, restrain the passions. Stay in the Bible consistently. Right? Amen. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? How, how are you going to help your son, Dad, get on the right path when it comes to wisdom? Teach him to clean himself up with the Bible. Go to the Bible, son. It has the answers. Let's find them. Find them together. Amen? What's the problem, son? Well, I'm depressed. So let's find the answer. What's the problem, son? Well, I'm lusting in the wrong way. Let's find the answer. What's the problem, girl? I just, I, I'm lonely. Let's find the answer. Right? Guard the heart. Be a good example. And keep your heart right, too. Number five. Almost done. Five pillars. Serve. Serve together joyfully. Serve together. Psalm 102 says, wisdom pillar says to serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Amen. You know, it's fun to serve the Lord together. I was on a bus route in uh, West Virginia with my daughters. Where's Lacey tonight? Nursery. And one of the things that we enjoyed is, well, there's a lot of things on the bus route, I remember. But one of the things that they enjoyed is every Saturday morning on the way to the bus meeting, we would stop at McDonald's. McDonald's. You say, what? Yeah, but it was a, a time spent with them serving the Lord together. And then we'd eat on the way to the bus meeting. We'd go to the bus meeting. Then we'd go out bus calling and go soul winning. And then on Sunday morning, we'd get on the bus and go pick up boys and girls that come to church. I served with them, and it was a joy to watch my girls. And that's why my girls love the bus ministry. You, you realize they didn't just didn't come here, and this was their first bus ministry. They've been in the bus ministry for many years. They have a heart for the bus ministry. Serve together with your family. I've known some very strong families that have been involved in some uh, ministries, working all together, serving together, and they're the most joyful family that you can ever be around. Number six, respond to the Holy Spirit con continually. Respond to the Holy Spirit. We need to teach our kids how to respond to the Holy Spirit. We need to make sure that we're aware that the Holy Spirit's working in their life. Say, how would you know that? If you're in tune with them, you'd know that. Families, you just can't put them in front of the TV and send them out the door without knowing what's going on in their heart. Yeah. Is the Holy Spirit dealing with you in a way? You know, they're acting a little different. Maybe they're a little snappy. They, they're usually not snappy. 
Maybe their attitude is a little stinking right now, and you're usually not like that. Well, what are you going to do? Are you going to get mad at them, take them to the room, take away their games? No, something's wrong with them. The Holy Spirit is working on them. Find out what the Holy Spirit's leading them. There's nothing more important and wise to teach our families and our children than to have a Holy Spirit-filled walk, constantly responding to His working in their lives. Romans 8, 14, wisdom, wisdom pillar says this, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. We are led by God because we identify because we are the sons of God. Finally, purify, and this is the one that I've already talked about a little bit, but let's look at the, or let's uh, purify your homes tenaciously. Now, you're not going to like what I'm going to say here. And you parents are going to think I'm from outer space. But 1 Timothy 5.22, written to a young preacher, wisdom's pillar there reminded him to keep himself pure. Paul wrote Timothy and said, Timothy, you need to keep yourself pure. You know, parents, it's not wisdom for you and I, listen to me, to not check the purity level of our children. You are doing them a disservice when you allow them to go into their rooms, close their doors, full internet access with no filters, and you say, well, my little Johnny would never. Your little Johnny's heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. And so is my little Johnny. I don't have a Johnny, though. I have a Lacey, and I have an Addie. And it's not wise for you, hey, You're invading my privacy. No, I'm your dad. I'm your mom. I'm allowed to do whatever I want, look wherever I want, and go and search whatever you've been doing. That's wisdom. You you say, well, they're they're not going to do it. Those are the parents who end up going, why did I not listen? And sometimes it's too late. Wisdom takes the time to check out where they've been surfing on the Internet. Wisdom takes the time to, who, uh, to find out who their friends are. Man, find out who they're friends with. Can I, can I just help you here? This is going to shock you. There are, in church, there may be friends that you may not want to be associating with. Oh, pastor, how can you say that? We all love each other. That doesn't mean that you have to go unsupervised and let them go to somebody else's house. Without wisdom's voice saying, she's crying, saying, whoa, whoa. That little small tug on your heart that says, check that out. Check them out. Make sure they're okay. Wisdom takes the time to check it out. Their friends are, what exactly they're going to when they go out. Amen. By the way, parents and adults, wisdom also takes the time to check out where you've been. What you've been surfing on and what you've been uh, what internet you've been, what site you've been searching and what, uh, who you, what you've been watching and who you've been with. Now, let's go back to chapter 9 here and we'll close. Wisdom is building a house, right? She had built her house. She had hewn out her seven pillars. We kind of paralleled that passage with James chapter 3. We saw those seven pillars there of purity and peacefulness and gentleness and all these things. But the fact of the matter is it's setting up pillars of wisdom. And then wisdom is preparing to set the table. We talked about that in verse number 2 and verse number 3. She's preparing the table to give understanding to the family that is lacking wisdom in some areas. Let me ask you something. There's nobody in here who has complete wisdom. When we need wisdom, we ask for it. And God gives it to us fully and, and, and upbraideth not, liberally. And then finally, wisdom's instructions are come. You just can't just, here here it is. It's almost like, do you know it's like salvation, right? Think about it. Jesus died for the entire world, right? So then are everybody saved? I mean, he died for the whole world. So then everybody should be saved. See, he he already did that. No, the Bible says you have to call upon him. You have to believe in your heart and confession is made with the mouth and the heart. For with the heart, man believeth in the righteousness. With the tongue, confession is made unto salvation. And so Jesus paid it all. Yes, he did. But you have to come and take it. Wisdom is there. Wisdom is in the Bible. Wisdom is in the sermons that you hear. Wisdom is in the the reading that you read in your Bible. And you find these nuggets. You should be finding nuggets in your Bible reading. Nuggets of what? Wisdom. 
boy, that's wise. I need to start doing that, or I need to change that. Amen? That's what the Bible does. It, it changes us. It's quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Sometimes it cuts. And it says here that it's prepared for you, and all you got to do, verse 5, is you got to come and eat of it. Come and get it. And you got to forsake the foolish. Look at verse 6. Wisdom is crying out. She's building her house, and she's saying, Come and take and eat of it, which I have mingled. I've prepared all this. Now forsake the foolish and live. And then go in the way of understanding. In other words, let's go and apply this wisdom in our home. Let's set up these pillars. You know, seven pillars there that we talked about. And the seven things that we talked about here afterwards. And there's so many more that you can add, right? There's so much wisdom in God's book. But my question tonight is, how are you doing with your wisdom in your home? Is wisdom even in your home? Is there any wise decision you're making? Or is there just foolish decision after foolish decision after foolish decision? And then you wonder, what happened? You're not building your home. Wisdom is prepared for you, right? But you got to go and take it. You got to take it. You got to forsake some things, right? You know, when I got saved, I had to forsake my old friends because it was foolishness to go back and to partake of those that I ran with before I was saved. I had to. You have to, you have to cut those cords. Forsake the foolish because I wanted to live unto God. I wanted to, I wanted to get his understanding in my life. I wanted wisdom. I wasn't going to do that by hanging out with foolish people. I wasn't going to do that, Brother Layman, by hanging out with brutish people. You know, brutish means, you know what brutish means in the Bible? The brutish man? Stupid. Some things we know that, okay, stupid. The guy cutting the wood on the other side down a, hey, really? Stupid. But then we do that with our families. We do that in our homes. You say, it's none of your business what I do in my home. You're right, it's not, but it's his. And he tells you how to live and how to get wisdom, and you got to just take it. I'm just telling you the truth of what God's word and how it works in your life, and it does work. When we pray consistently, play together joyfully, serve God together, when we do these things, it sets up pillars of wisdom that gives us strength and support. And oh, how our families need that. They're crumbling. And that, the, devil is, the devil is bombarding the pillars. As he does. He likes to take shots at them. Stand strong. Don't give in. Amen? Get wisdom. And therefore, get understanding. With all thy getting, get understanding. Let's pray. Father, we love you tonight. We're grateful for your word, Lord. And wisdom's path here leads us down a path of these pillars that we need to erect in our lives. The, young, the youngest person in this room to the oldest person in this room is not wise enough to withstand the wiles of the devil. We need to put that whole armor on. One of those... Uh, another piece of armor, if you will, not listed in Ephesians chapter 6, but is it's wisdom. Setting up these, this, this structure, these pillars, these strength, so that our homes are what they should be. Oh, I'm so tired of the devil wrecking homes. I'm so tired of the relationships that are destroyed for lack of wisdom. Lord, help us to get wisdom. Help us to be wise in our decisions and not fools. Help us to run to the Bible and to run to godly people before we make a foolish decision. Help us to build our house on these pillars. Lord, we sure do love you now. Bless the invitation now, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet. The piano, the organ will play. The altar's open tonight. Hey, come and ask God for some more wisdom. You don't have enough. I don't have enough. Nobody's got the exact amount of wisdom. We always need more. The altar's open.